Welcome back to the sixth video in this series and in this one we're going to take a look at how we might go about changing the username and password login form to be able to use an email address instead of that username. Uh, so what I'm going to do is essentially change how the uh, back-end authentication works in Django uh, by changing that to an email which is what a lot of people tend to want to do instead of having this extra username field where uh, each user that registers on the site has to register also with a username and then remember that username to be able to log in with. Uh, a lot of sites tend to use an email address instead because it's something that uh, people already remember and it's just easy to log in with in a lot of cases. So let's have a look first at, uh, so what does, the, what does the current authentication do? So it takes a username and a password. Uh, now that's built into Django, that, that logic. Uh, but what I want to do is override that. Now I think I'm going to do that by creating a new file to be able to contain the authentication backend uh, using the email address within. Now in this project that I'm working on we do have an accounts app which handles all of the uh, you know, account based things, so the authentication, the registration, that sort of thing. So I think it would make sense to put the file with this new email backend in inside of that Django app. So I'm going to do a new file just in the accounts folder and I'm just going to call it backends, just in case we want to perhaps do various backends. We could always define more than one if we wanted to, uh, and then change between them. Say if we wanted to have uh, an email backend and an email and username backend, so that you can have the option of easily switching between them if you want, if you wanted to. Uh, but in this case, I'm just going to do an email backend only. Uh, so uh, we need the user model. So I'm going to do from Django dot contrib. Uh, dot auth dot user sorry dot auth dot models import user import user uh, so let's define a new class I'm going to say email backend so this is going to be where all of the logic comes from and uh, so this isn't going to inherit from any Django specific thing so I just inherit from object which is generally what you tend to inherit from if you don't have anything else to inherit from and I'm going to define a method called authenticate, uh, so def authenticate, and that's going to take self, uh, and then I'm going to take also a username and a password. Now it has to be called authenticate because that is a method that Django will pick up uh, based on how we're going to use this class. Uh, so we're going to essentially say to Django uh, in the settings this is the class that I will want to use for the email backend. So though it doesn't inherit from anything special to give it access to uh, you know that Django. So although it doesn't inherit from any Django specific class uh, the way in which we use the class will sort of dictate uh, to Django that we want to use it as a backend for authentication and so the way that I'm defining this method uh, is a sort of a part of that uh, and it's also going to take quags in case we get any, any sort of extra things that uh, we don't necessarily know as of yet. Uh, I'm going to hide this tree view for now so we've just got a little bit more room so we can see everything on one line and then this line over here is 80 characters which is generally what I try to stick to when I'm uh, writing Python code. Now all I want to do in this authenticate method is return none if I don't want to log the user in uh, so that's just fairly straightforward if I didn't want them to ever authenticate I would just return none here but since that's not the purpose of this class I want to return a user object uh, if I do end up authenticating them uh, so the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to assume that the data that's entered into this form is still the username because that's how the default authentication authentication works but because well we could change this form text to say email so that's sort of irrelevant we can do that quite easily uh, if they entered their email into this box Django would still see it as a username so hopefully this isn't too confusing but I'm still going to assume that uh, Django passes in what is essentially a username but that will actually be the user's email address uh, so to start off I want to see if uh, the user can be gotten from the database so from the user model in Django so user.objects 
dot get and then what I want to do here as I was saying is instead of pair okay is username is equal to username uh, instead what I want to do is I want to say email so at the moment it's just comparing if username is equal but if I say if email is equal to username it's going to compare whatever is in the username field so if we imagine that this instead of saying username if this that if that said email and then they entered their email address for the account I could just go ahead and say okay so that's the email for the account and if they were to submit that and their correct password we'd want to compare uh, the sort of quote username that Django sees as being passed in even though we show the user this text field as uh, as an email field uh, and we want to compare that with the email so that is how we can quite easily uh, use email authentication even though fundamentally Django still sort of thinks it's a username uh, we just uh, we compare it with that email uh, so that's an easy way of using the built-in authentication to be able to sort of uh, circumvent having to actually provide a username uh, now that could fail so what if there's no user in the database well I need to catch that exception and really all I want to do in that case is uh, return none uh, so if I do accept a user dot does not exist so that's going to be the type of exception that's going to be raised if it can't find a user at all and so I just want to return none uh, but also this could technically I think it could return multiple values uh, it shouldn't ever do that because the uh, we should really make sure that the email is unique to that account but just in case we can always account for that because it's be better to sort of be safe when you're uh, trying to think about that sort of thing uh, and so this exception is going to be uh, so user dot multiple objects returned and I think and so all we want to hear is uh, well it would probably be good to uh, maybe not authenticate them to be safe or uh, you know because you wouldn't know necessarily which account is theirs uh, but in this case I'm just going to be lazy and I'm going to do a filter and essentially just pick the first one of the list that is returned uh, so let's say just the first one that's entered into the database so if I order by uh, ID and that should give us uh, the list so we want the first from that list so it would be the zeroth index in that list uh, that list of user objects uh, so that's going to re return none if there's no user instance so that should be okay uh, now that I've done that so I think what I'm actually going to do in fact is change this to first because first is sort of uh, more suited to this sort of purpose uh, although it doesn't really matter I don't think I think both would probably have worked but what I want to do now is I want to say if the user is active so if the account itself is active and also if the password is valid because remember we haven't checked the password yet then we can log them in otherwise just return none so well let's start with that so return none so if nothing else it's at least going to return none which is what would happen anyway in Python I suppose but what ideally we want to happen is we want to return the user so let's say if get attra so I'm checking for the attribute on the user model and I want to say the is active attribute and so if the password is valid then we're going to return the user so to do that I'm going to say user dot check password so that's a method again on the user model uh, just standard Django and I'm going to say I'm just going to pass the password into that so remember we have access to the password here all I'm going to do is pass that in and then return user if that all succeeds uh, so this is pretty much the bulk of the authentication backend done but in actual fact for Django to use it as an authentication backend there are two required methods not just one so the other method on the backend that it requires you to define for this use case and all that does is based on a primary key it simply returns the user object uh, so for the standard Django model which is probably what most people are going to be using 
uh, that's quite straightforward but it gives you this option so that if you did want to completely ignore the Django user model in favor of perhaps your own completely custom user model then it does give you that option uh, so to do that I'm going to say get user and this is going to take just self as well as uh, I guess the primary key which we can call user ID and this is going to also be a try accept block so I'm going to try to get the user uh, so user.objects.get and the primary key is going to be equal to the one that was passed in and then if you can't do that I'm going to say, so it probably doesn't exist, uh, does not exist, and then all I'm going to do in that case is I'm going to say return none, uh, so I expect except, so just like that, uh, and this is going to be equal to user, or in fact what we could just do, because we're just going to return that immediately, is we can say return, so we're just going to return that straight away. Now that I've done that, I've pretty much finished the implementation of this email backend class. The only issue with it is that we're not actually using it at all in our Django project, so we need to be able to integrate that somehow into our project uh, and allow it to replace the one that's currently being used. Uh, so to do that I'm just going to go to the settings, I'm going to open up this tree view, I'm going to come down to settings, I'm going to put it in base settings, and just at the end of here I'm going to add another setting, so it's going to be called authentication uh, backends. Now this is plural, so it's going to be uh, an iterable, we can either make it a tuple or a list, so I'm just going to define one for now and I'm going to say uh, it's just going to be the location of the backend so in this case it would be accounts, backends and then email backend so backends and then the name of the class was email backend and because we want a tuple not a string so I need that comma there, that's very important um, and now we should be able to try it, so let's have a look over here. Uh, so I already entered the email for the account with the username Max. It happens to have an email called max at email .com. It doesn't matter that it's not a real email address, it's just uh, for demonstrational purpose it, purposes, it just has to exist in the database. So let's go ahead and type in the password. And cool, so that authenticates. So it's, it shows us that uh, this was working correctly and presumably if we log out and then we try to log in with the username so this is the same password it says uh, incorrect username and password now this hasn't been updated so that would be something else that we would need to change if we were going to just log in with the email consistently um, uh, but that's not too difficult to do that's how I personally write the custom email backend in Django